Business Brain, episode 461 for Wednesday, June 28th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, where we are tuning our business brains together every single week. That way we get a little value out of this and it keeps us on the path to living that charmed life. Sponsors for this episode include a new sponsor, Miro, M-I-R-O dot com slash podcast. That is not a generic term. Well, it is, but it is the correct link. And you can create these virtual uh, whiteboards and your first three, three Miro boards are free at that link forever. And also factormeals.com slash brain 50 where code brain 50 gets you 50% off your first box. We'll talk more in depth about both of those in a little bit for now. Uh, having fun with contractors here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Everybody loves contractors. I'm out here in California. We have a lot of, uh, this is Shannon Jean and we could probably share some contractor stories and, uh, there's some awesome contractors out there and Absolutely. probably the most successful ones are listening to this show right now. I would think so. I talked about an electrician that I had at my house back in, I probably talked about this in February, late February on the show. Uh, they were here. He was here. His team was here in late January. And in February at the 30 day mark, I was, I was sort of, pondering when I might see an invoice for these guys having been here all day, putting in some ethernet cable for me. Uh, here we are at the end of June and uh, that day has yet to pass. And wow. I, yep. And I, like, the thing is I, I am not surprised. It, this is a classic issue. I've experienced it from the other side myself when I was doing, starting out doing a lot of computer consulting, but it really could be anything. Even like when I was mowing lawns, like the first business I created, I, you know, if you don't bill your customers, they will rarely pay you. If you do bill your customers, yeah. especially if you're in the service business, like mowing lawns, fixing people's computers, being an electrician, they will almost always pay you. I mean, you're certainly going to find some clients that don't. By and large, if it's you doing something of value for another person, there's a relationship there. They're probably not going to ignore your bill when it shows up. They want to pay you. They asked you to do the work. You told them what the rate was. Like you did all the right things. They like, and now you're just not asking them for money. That's the part that changes it from a hobby into a business. If you're if you're not billing people, you're not you're not in business. Yeah. I, I ha you may not be surprised to know I have a lot to say about this topic. No, <laughs> because no. I've <laughs> I've been involved in this too. Yeah. And uh I I have uh, sometimes I think it's inefficiency. Um, yes. It's we, when, think, we, we say it all the time. None of us yes. few of us get into business because we love invoicing people. Correct. Right. Like Correct. we want to do a thing and provide a service widget value of some sort. Yeah. But you, you like, this is part of it. You have to right. bill your clients. And, I, and as awkward as it is, as it might seem to you as the person who did the work, you're like, oh, I love this work. I would do it anyway. That's fine. But it's, it's still okay to bill your clients. And it's going to be right. less awkward for them if you bill them than if you don't bill them. Because now, you know, here I am what, five months out from when this work was done. When he finally bills me, if I have a question about the, like, wow, that invoice seems high or this doesn't seem right. Like now it's it, like, it's not in anyone's recent memory. It's, it's, it's just, it's bad. Bill people. Bill people. Yeah. I, I also think sometimes it can be imposter syndrome where they don't totally. feel confident in billing. And yes. so if you don't like that part of it, you need to get somebody <laughs> to do it for you. Uh, the other thing I will just say about this topic is, there's never been an, a time in our business history that it's easier to build people. Huh. True most that. of it can be, yeah, most of it can be automated. Most of it can be paid with credit card. And I, I would argue that the two to 3% you're going to pay with a credit card is, could be the best money you ever spend. Oh, not only because. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Not only because it just makes it easy to pay, but it also separates you from the payment process and the pain of 
making a payment. It's the same reason why the casinos give you chips and don't let you gamble with cash, right? You, your mind starts thinking uh, it's different. And yeah, you get your credit card statement, sure. but you know, you're just a little different. It's why everybody has one subscriptions. Step removed. Yeah. Yes. One step removed. Set up automated billing. When you have a new client, get their credit card. Don't nickel and dime them with the two to 3% because you miss one billing and you've made up all that two to 3% you're trying to get people to pay uh, and, and just set it up. It works. And you can thank me later. All right. Look, all you professional service providers out there, and I know there's a lot of you listening to Business Brain. Are you ready to elevate your collaborative sessions? Let me introduce you to Miro, our sponsor and your ultimate tool for driving engagement in workshops, meetings, and all types of team collaborations. With Miro, every voice gets a chance to be heard. Thanks to their built-in voting functionality and the ability to time box discussions, gathering and organizing feedback has never been this fun and efficient. But that's not all. Say goodbye to those dull decks, because with Miro's dynamic platform, your presentations get a makeover. Their frame and slides functionalities can transform your presentations, helping you win pitches with style. Conduct your client workshops with Miro and experience the power of real-time feedback. Miro encourages participation in various formats, including comments, sticky notes, and live reactions. Miro is also compatible with all the tools you're already using, from video conferencing like Zoom to project management like Notion. With Miro's visual whiteboard, you can run meetings, take notes, track tasks, and foster effective collaboration. So why wait? Elevate your team's collaboration experience like never before. Try Miro today. And your first three Miro boards are free forever when you sign up. So sign up today at Miro.com slash podcast. Again, that's M-I-R-O dot com slash podcast. Your first three Miro boards are free forever when you sign up. And our thanks to Miro for sponsoring this episode. Oh, man, I am so happy that it's finally starting to get warm out. It's officially summer now. And with that, we might be looking for some wholesome, convenient meals to eat on sunny, active days. Our sponsor, Factor, also America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You get to be productive all day, and then with Factor, you get to skip the trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, the prepping, the cleaning up, too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. All you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back outside and soak up the warm weather. Lisa and I have eaten Factor meals a bunch. We've got a bunch more ready to eat. These are great for those days. It really is just two minutes to heat and enjoy. And you can elevate eating at home with Factor's new upscale surf and turf and surf and surf meal options like roasted garlic filet mignon and shrimp and Cajun spice shrimp and salmon. No prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash brain 50 and use code brain 50 to get 50% 50% off your first box. That's code BRAIN50 at factormeals.com slash BRAIN50 to get 50% off your first box. And our thanks to Factor for sponsoring this episode. And while I have you here, have you ever wondered what are the secrets behind some of the most successful women in the world? On the Super Women podcast, designer Rebecca Minkoff dives into these secrets and more with women from all walks of life, from CEOs and founders to artists and designers. These conversations show us what life is like without the pretty filters. Rebecca exposes how loss can make us stronger, helps us navigate what it means to be vulnerable, and makes your inner superwoman shine. Join Rebecca and find the Super Women podcast every Tuesday, wherever you're listening to this podcast And our thanks to Rebecca for doing this swap with us. So, Shannon, I have another story about a contractor. Yes, Uh, sir. You know, our our customer service maxim here, which is every business is in the customer service business. And I, I, I often like to follow that up with, and if anyone out there knows of a business that doesn't require customers, let us know. Feedback at businessbrain.show, right? You might have found the holy grail. Because every business has customers. You need customers to be in business. Therefore, you are in the customer service business. I, we all encounter people who forget this. We have this plumber that's been doing work at our house. We're redoing a couple of bathrooms and we're about to redo our kitchen in the fall. 
And uh, we will not, if, if we can, if we can avoid it, we will not be using this plumber <laughs> for, I, I have to say if we can avoid it because uh, we thought we weren't using him for the second bathroom. And yet we did because it's hard to find plumbers. Like it, like, you know, if, if, Kids, if you want a field to go into that is ripe with opportunities, find, you know, find one of the, and you're interested in one of the trades, do it. Electrician, plumbers, you know, yeah. general contractors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. So much, so much opportunity. So much opportunity. Yeah. And uh, you probably own your own shop within 10 years. Like really, you apprentice with somebody and yeah. then, you know, th you might even wind up taking their shop because they're, they're, you know, the average age of contractors is, is, uh, is just rising. It's crazy. But uh, this guy has been, he is, he does great work, like, like really meticulous and all of that. And perhaps for the same reason, he's got, you know, some personality quirks that make him not so good at customer service. His, I think I might've ranted about it on the show here where he, like the estimate he sent us didn't even break out what the cost of the parts were like toilets and things like that. He was going to charge right, us right. 450 bucks for a toilet that should be like a hundred. But, uh, yeah. he was, we're the, one of the bathrooms is kind of in our, our finished basement. We're redoing it. It's never been a great bathroom. It now it really is. Uh, it's almost done at this point, but, uh, it has a shower in there and it, you know, it's low ceilings. It's a finished basement. And so, um, you know, it, I, I need to be able to fit in there. I'm six, three. I can fit the old one. I was like a <laughs> presumption that I would fit I see where this is going in the new one. Right. And so, but they completely rebuilt the shower. The contractor we have doing it did great work. It's friggin' amazing. I'm probably going to shower there all the time. Cause it's, it's awesome. Right. But, uh, the plumber brought this drain in, right. And he's, and the drain was going to raise up the floor like three inches. And my wife saw it and, she was like, what is this? So you're going to have to step up. What is this? Basically. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's like stepping up is fine. Like we've got enough room where I could fit still with a little bit of a step up, but like this was going to be a huge step up and the shower was going to be, you know, I'm like six, three, the shower was going to be less than six feet. Right. Like I would have had to like crouch to be in this shower. And my wife goes to this plumber and says, well, Hey, that that's not going to work. He's like, no, this is the only way to do it. And listen, if a contractor ever says that to you, you that's when you know they're wrong because there's always another yes, way, right? Exactly, but exactly. he had my in this in this conversation, he had my wife convinced that he wasn't going to do it another way. You know, certainly there well, in, it, in his yeah, mind, what he was really saying in his brain is we've always done it this way. Correct. Which is one of the six things you never you say. You never work. say, <laughs> right? But he was saying, "No, this is how we're going to do it." And she's like, "My husband won't fit in this shower." She's like, "We're not going to pay, you know, whatever, 15 grand for this bath or whatever. We're paying 20 grand for the bathroom, whatever it works out to be, for a shower that my husband and my son can't use." And the guy said, "Well, you have two other showers in your house." <gasps> oh man. Like, yeah. like if it, tough. it, yeah, like he, he definitely like, he found another thing to add to the list, right. Of, you yeah. know, Oh, don't worry about it. Like you, you just won't use this. You'll pay for it, but you won't use it. That's it, a huge mistake. Huge mistake. Like if we weren't already not planning to hire him again, that put him on the list. And by the time yeah. I got home, my wife, at least it was like, I can't figure this. Like, what are we going to do? This is a disaster. I'm like, well, let's go look at this. Like the, everybody had left by this point in the evening. So the, none of the contractors were there. And I, she shows me the drain and I'm like, yeah, okay. Like that's it. And I'm like, but I look at the drain. I'm like, well, I don't know anything about this stuff, but I do know that I could cut off the bottom ring of this drain and stuff it inside it. And now I've just saved an inch and a half and there's probably another way to do it. And I'm like, there's always another way. And she was like, no, he said, there's no other way. I'm like, yeah, in his mind, there's no other yes. way. But exactly in our house, there's definitely another way. Right. And and this is the the lesson that I dealt with a bunch when I was managing uh, my first real team of people that I managed. And I screwed a lot of things up there. But uh, one thing that I, I noticed early on and, and always had to work with was I was managing a, a team of people that were nerds. Right. Like going out like pre geek squad. It was the business was called sure. computer nerds going out and fixing people's computers. And some of these 
nerds that we had, a lot of them, in fact, not all, but a lot of them would fix the client's computer as though it were their own. Oh. And and others would advise the client as to what they would do if it were their own, but acknowledging that it wasn't would then stop and listen and have the client tell them what they wanted them to do. You gave your advice. Now you listen and then you do what the client asks. It, you know, it's that simple. And this guy did does not get that. And certainly in that moment that day when he told Lisa, oh, you have two other showers in your house. What's the big deal? Uh, you know, and he's a short guy, by you the will way. Tell that, you'll tell that story forever. Yes. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, in, you know, uh, uh, for his, <laughs> not not in his favor, unfortunately. Mm -mm. And, uh, no, but I like I managed yeah. a lot of people like this and it, it was like I had to train them and some of them were untrainable. I get the feeling this guy might have fallen into this category if if I were his manager in that regard. But you know, I'd have to like, no, you give them your advice and then you close your mouth and open your ears and listen. And the client knows your advice because you gave it to him and that was valuable and they paid you for that. And now the gears are changing. And this was the thing that usually, if I was going to get somebody to understand this, this was the way to do it. I would say, and now your job changes. You are, you went from being consultant advisor to worker bee, and you've given the client all the information that the consultant needs to give them. And now you go to worker bee mode and let them tell you what they want you to do. And then you do it. And of course, if it's it. something yeah. that you're like completely unwilling or unable to do, you tell them that and and work that out, whatever whatever that next step is. You know, they yeah. Well, I yeah. I think that you can't uh, do the impossible, but yeah, but yeah. you can do what they ask if what they ask is not impossible. I agree. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. I, I showers, think that. Man. Yeah, contractor stories are awesome. If you have some feedback at businessbrain.show because uh, there's always lessons and some real nuggets. Um, and again, I love contractors. They're, they they oh, make things happen. Absolutely. The good ones are priceless. Yep. Uh, and I'm sure they're listening today. And if uh, you have some stories about ones that aren't, aren't or are, let us know. Love yeah, to hear from. yeah the, the stories work both directions. Again, check out our sponsors, factormeals.com slash brain50, code brain50. And Miro.com slash podcast. Keep living that charm life, and we'll see you next time.